In the previous video, I explained some of the ways that team members can collaborate on programming the robot when they can't gather in the same room. In this video, I'll give you a demonstration of the real-time collaboration. Let's assume a team member has built a robot and dropped it off at the coach's location, and another team member wants to program the robot. Let's say the team member who wants to do the programming is named Jane. The first thing that coach needs to do is install Remote Desktop. Coach goes to a page called remotedesktop.google.com slash support. Coach clicks on the download icon to install the remote desktop software. This installation step only needs to be done once at each computer where the programming will be hosted. Coach's team might be using EB3 Lab, EB3 Programming, the new EB3 Classroom, or the Spike Prime app. Let's assume the team is using EB3 Lab, previously known as EB3G. Coach starts EB3 Lab and opens a project screen. The team can use just about any video conferencing solution they want, but for this demonstration, we'll use Zoom. Let's assume that Coach previously scheduled a Zoom session and emailed the link to Jane. Coach starts the Zoom session. Jane uses her link to join the session. Now Coach opens Zoom's chat window, types the remote desktop link, adds a forward slash, the word session, and another slash. Then Coach goes back to the remote desktop page. Coach then clicks on Generate Code. A code is displayed on the screen. Coach copies the code from the remote desktop page, goes back to Zoom, and pastes it at the end of the web address, and sends it. Jane then opens chat on her computer and clicks on the link. Then this causes a web browser window to open, and the code that Coach just added is placed on that page. Jane then clicks on Connect to obtain remote control of Coach's computer. Coach clicks on Share to allow remote control by Jane. Notice that Remote Desktop allows Jane to see Coach's screen even though Coach hasn't asked Zoom to share it. The sharing comes along with the remote control provided by Remote Desktop. Jane now uses her mouse to move the cursor on Coach's screen down to the menu area and selects a block. Jane builds a series of blocks on Coach's computer. Jane can also use her keyboard and Coach's computer acts as if Coach is typing. Meanwhile, Coach turns on the robot and connects it to his or her computer with a USB cable so it's ready for a download. Jane then clicks on the download button to cause the new program to be put into the robot's memory. Bluetooth could have been used for the download instead. Coach then selects the new program on the robot, points his or her webcam at the robot so Jane can see it, and presses the center button. The robot moves but isn't doing exactly what Jane wants. So she continues to use her control of Coach's computer to make changes to the program and download it again. That concludes our demonstration, but we assume that Jane and Coach continue this process until the robot does what Jane wants it to do. When they're done, Coach clicks on the Stop Sharing to discontinue the remote control of his or her computer. We've seen how Google Remote Desktop can be used to allow teams of students to collaborate on programming the robot and testing their programs.